people. We're back. Tankers Fantasy Football here. We got our koozies. We're all ready to rock and roll God, over God, here. Fucking labels out, bears. <laughs> we have the NFL draft. So, of course, we got to catch you up with all the stuff. We're going to give you names as well as some guys' stocks that might have taken a hit from all this action that went down over the weekend. I'm going to lead it off with probably the most fantasy relevant, at least for this first uh, season, definitely in redraft. Talking about Leonard Fournette going to Jacksonville. I think it's a good pick for the Jaguars, and I think it puts the to puts the uh, values of Chris Ivory and TJ Yeldon in the toilet. And I think the Jaguars have given the opportunity if they can have the ball and have this many snaps. I think they're going to try to give Fournette the ball as many times as the Cowboys gave Elliott last year. Yeah, I think Chris Ivory is really only there because if they cut him, they don't save any money. So at this point, he's just an extra warm body on their depth chart. But I think it's going to be Leonard Fournette minimum 20 to 25 times a game. He's going. They're going to want to oh. try and slow it down and keep the ball out of Bortles' hands as much as possible here. And then they drafted. Uh, then they drafted tackle too in the second too. They got a good Cam tackle Robinson in the second and good tackle. They drafted a fullback in the seventh Ooh. round. Only two fullbacks you, drafted. You know when you're drafting fullbacks, you're looking to run that rock, baby. And we got Christian McCaffrey, another uh, fantasy darling guy going into the draft. But I mean, some people are in love with his landing spot, but I'm kind of hating on it. I'm really not in love with it either. People are saying Carolina is going to utilize him, but really, you look at if he's not in PPR league here, standard value is dead. Yeah, the standard. I mean, I've never been a big fan of Carolina. Carolina running back. It's not like they've changed the system unless they're going to straight up come out and have run plays designed for this guy, and they probably are since they picked him so high. But with Jay Stu still around, I mean, at least for this year, I think his value is down, especially I mean, in standard leagues for sure. But uh, he's not going to be getting those goal line carries because you know either Cam Newton or Jay Stu are, I mean, are, are going to be stealing those. So I'm thinking if he's not getting you five, six catches a game in PPR, uh, his his value is not going to be much more than a very low upside RB2. Yeah, and you're not going to get the value in the return game if he's playing a lot of special teams. And, I, yeah, I'm just – if it's not PPR, I don't know if I'm that interested in him at all. And he's going to be taken probably fourth, fifth round in these redrafts. And for me, that's a little steep. That is a little steep. Another darling talk – another – this guy has been moving up dynasty ranks. Real quick talking about Joe Mixon. Jeremy Hill might be leaving town. Bernard's coming off that ACL tear. I think mean, Joe Mixon looking pretty talented out there. If they're looking to give him the opportunity, I think he might be able to run away with it. I and mean, a lot of people hating on him because the off-field issues, which deservingly so, they should hate on him. But in terms of football aspects, if he's on your fantasy team, I think you're going to have a lot to love. And I would not be shocked at the end of the year if Joe Mixon is the number one rookie running back. Oh, no shock at all there. And I think Marvin Lewis might be a good coach for these guys with little problems. I mean, I know Adam Jones has run into a little problems of late, but for a few seasons there, he was kind of a – and he was going about his business, getting it done, you know, being a very productive player once again. And I think if Marvin Lewis can get this kid settled down, we might be looking at a – a definite. Uh, I mean, if he's been getting the if he's getting the opportunities, he might be uh, you know uh, low. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, bottom tier RB two with some high upside for more out there. And a guy who I was loving before the draft, but just so happened to fall to about the worst situation possible. We're talking about Alvin Kamara going to New Orleans, so he's going to be behind Ingram and Peterson on the depth chart. But with that said, it sounds like he's still going to get third down work. Kind of taking that cadet role, yeah. or is the Reggie Bush and Darren well, he, Sproles role gonna in be, New Orleans? Ingram is going to be catching plenty of balls. I mean, that's going to be—I think that's going to be more Ingram's role this year. I mean, Peterson's going to be getting those a lot of first and second down work as long as he's healthy. What did you say? Peterson's missed 28 games in the last, last three. Two, se last three seasons, last he's three missed seasons? like 28 games. I mean, my goodness. And besides last year, Ingram hasn't played a full season since like 2012. So I think one of the, at least one of those guys is looking to miss time. Kamara, 
might be more of a kind of like a late round flyer in redrafts with some upside but i think if you're in a dynasty league he has some serious potential there and uh dalvin cook a guy that just took uh, latavius murray's value and just put a stake in it out there just put a stake Davis Murray, Davis Murray's coming off ankle surgery, and now he's got. I mean, when the when the when uh, Cook fell to the Vikings at 41, they were just salivating out there. They scooped him up, feeling confident about it. If he if he learns the offense and is a decent uh, pass protector, I don't see how any way they're gonna. This, I mean, Latavius Murray is gonna necessarily keep this kid off the field. I mean, DeAndre Washington and Jalen Richard were getting on the field over a lot over Latavius Murray a lot last year. There's no way Latavius Murray is gonna get those touchdowns. Like that. That's what he was living and dying off last year was all those touchdowns. I think that. That was a career outlier for Murray. Uh, I think this pick stakes Latavius Murray. His dynasty value is an absolute dumpster. And I think his redraft value is also is uh, falling pretty fast. Yeah, and I think he's definitely going to get all the third down work. There's no reason that Murray's going to be on the field in those situations. Now let's talk about two guys, Green Bay, drafted back-to-back -back rounds. You got Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. Out of these guys, you know, I'm you're basically – taking a guess but if i'm gonna take jamal williams as the guy to potentially get more work here you know? i mean look at this guy he is a beef cake out <laughs> there bring it up oh look at that sexy boy i mean i mean my goodness and uh, ty montgomery can't carry the load but i think ty montgomery at least this year is going to be getting the uh, the bulk of the work out there i, I mean you know you gotta they, it, it, they gotta have a guy that knows the pass blocking scheme you can't be letting guys like Aaron Rodgers be getting hurt. I mean, that's bad news. That's their that's their lifeline up there. Packers. Yeah, M McCarthy said that Montgomery's going to be starting back, but I still feel like there's still about 10 to 15 carries maybe of guys not named team not named Montgomery that are going to have to get touches. So, and my bet would be on Jamal Williams, yeah, but yeah. I don't think he's anything more than a flyer at this point. One more running back touchdown, Perrine going to Washington. Matt Jones is dead. He's out of the equation. Don't worry about that. The only thing they got, he has got to take care of is Robert Kelly, who is also kind of a bigger back like uh, Perrine is. Uh, I mean, I think Perrine might just be the guy with the better pedigree, and yeah, I think it's worth a late round flyer and redraft for sure to see how it pans out there. Uh, you know, yeah, I really like this guy coming out of Oklahoma and like I said bigger bag about 230 maybe even 240 he's got some good speed to him but the main thing that's appetizing is just the depth chart he has to get through it would not shock me if you look up and he's a week one starter oh my goodness rolling and hard on him moving into wide receivers leading off with the guy who i think is going to have the most fantasy production week one talking Corey. i mean we not week one week year one talking Corey davis going down to tennessee and i think this uh takes uh, takes a big hit to richard matthews richard matthews are probably looking at his season last year being a career outlier now Corey davis coming in there's just I mean, you know, Richard Matthews has always just kind of been another guy in my eyes, and I know he did pretty good for you down the stretch, like with solid low-end wide receiver two numbers, you know, maybe some good solid solid sexy flex play action. But I just don't know if you're going to be able to rely on him, especially if Corey Davis can learn the offense and get on the football field on a regular basis. Yeah, this guy didn't run at the combine because of injury, but this guy's 6'3", 210. If you put on the film, I don't care if he went to a small school, this is like a Des Bryant mold type he's receiver. This guy's the real deal. And to, and to take him at number five overall, I know he's got all these records in college, but still, the competition that he played against to take him five overall, they've got to be in love with this guy. Mike Williams, a guy you know, I was kind of feeling really good about going in the draft. I don't really like the landing spot. There's a lot of mouths to feed down in San Diego. I think it hurts uh, Hunter Henry's stock. I you know Gates is still floating around there too. I think it hurts Hunter Henry's uh, red zone value because Mike Williams is kind of getting it. If he's going to be used in situationally, I think that would be what they would use him for. Yeah, definitely. 6'4", big frame, so... I just don't know. I mean, if Keenan Allen can somehow stay on the field, and I know he hasn't played a full game, a regular season game, talking about, talking about a full game, 
since like what mid October like 2015. I mean, my goodness, but I, <laughs> this guy can stay on the field. And Tyrell Williams is kind of floating around there too. And guys like Inman. Dontrell Inman, yeah, I mean, it's they, a lot of cheese. Yeah, <laughs> this guy's got guys. a straight up showstop main event in the off season. In the preseason, and just they got to be able to not keep him off the field if he's going to be able to produce for you year one in fantasy leagues. But at least with Philip Rivers as your quarterback, who likes to spread it around, he's going to get his opportunity. I don't know if he's going to. I don't think he's going to be able to be a week one guy. He might be a. I think he'll be a, a wait and see guy for yeah, sure. Kind of a bye week guy this year one. Throw him in there, maybe he can get in the end zone for you that week, but. I don't think he's going to be that seven grab for a hundred yards guy this this first year. I mean, it is, uh, Rivers has just never been the sexy boy. Throwing when Vjax was there, his best season was like sixty nine receptions, and that's not. And he's kind of got the same build as old Vjax, so uh, not feeling it this rookie season. Moving on, John Ross get himself an island if he would have wore the right cleats out there. Didn't happen. <laughs> Didn't happen, but that's okay, John Ross. I mean, I don't know. I don't really like the landing spot of Cincinnati. I see why they did it. This offense did not look the same last year without Sanu and without Marvin Jones. This guy ran a 4-2-2 at the combine, set the record. But this landing spot, Andy Dalton, I feel like, just loves A.J. Green too much. If A.J. Green's on the field, Tyler Eifert's on the field, I just think his value is just nothing more than a gadget, like chuck it deep to him, you know, maybe two or three times a game, and maybe every once in a while he hits home on one of those and pops off with a 70-yard burner touchdown. I feel like he's going to be like a Will Fuller of this year. He might have some flashes early, and he get on the hype about him, and then he just kind of hits that wall, and you say, where'd this guy go? It's totally just evaporates out there into nothing. You're thinking, Will Fuller, my God, I got a steal. This guy's going to be my sexy boy deluxe all season. No. (laughs) He's just waiver, he's waiver fodder by the end of the road if you're in redraft leagues. They're talking, guy, moving on to guys like J.D. Westbrook going to Jacksonville. And, then, you know, there's a pecking order going on. I know Allen Robinson had a bad year last year, but he's looking to get paid. Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns, and you got Marquise Lee. And Came had, on strong last year. And apparently the Jaguars are going to go more running backs out there, drafting Fernet, drafting tackles, drafting fullbacks. <laughs> So I just don't know, especially about this year one outlook for old D.D. Uh, Westbrook. Yeah, I don't think he's more than a flyer at this point. There's no way you can feel confident about him before, no. like, the 15th round in your draft. Oh, no. I mean, this is an absolute dart in deeper leagues and just hoping that somehow, some way, he just becomes... Yeah, this guy at best. but I just this guy at best is going to be fourth on the depth chart. The charm opportunity receivers. is not there. The opportunity is not there. At least to start. I mean, in dynasty leagues, you know, you get him, you stash him, you hope, you pray, you wait. <laughs> but in redraft, you we go don't to have. Church. We have. <laughs> we redraft. We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> One guy, because of the opportunity that I really like, Curtis Samuel ran a four three one. Now, this guy's a burner out there. <laughs> Carolina drafted him. They let Ted Ginn walk. Really, it's Calvin Benjamin weighing in at apparently 280 pounds. Not buying it. I mean, I'm a big gentleman. I'm a rather large gentleman, and I'm way north of 280. <laughs> but but, uh, but uh, we're talking no way. He didn't weigh 280. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he's more on 250, 255. I mean, 260, absolute <laughs> max. 280 is ridiculous. Like, if he weighed 280, he ate as many, as soon as the season over, he's eating as many Cheetos as I do. You know what I'm and, saying? He's just out there <laughs> pounding the Cheetos, drinking the sodas. He hasn't left his recliner in six months. Drinking the sodas. I mean, if he weighs 280, he definitely has to have a neck beard. <laughs> 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 so I, I'm if, kinda, if there's no reports of a neck beard, I think we're I think we're, I think we're safe. I think we're safe point. on the 280. <laughs> so I'm kind of feeling the Samuels. Another guy, just because of the opportunity, Zay Jones out there, Zay the Buffalo. Jones. I mean, he's not the. I mean, he's not super buttery or anything, but this guy is tough. He runs routes. 
This guy, you take a look at the weapons that Buffalo has. He might be. What a are they? I mean, you know, Watkins is a boomer bust. He can't stay on the damn football field. And he, you know, Woods and Goodwin are gone. At dynasty stash. This might be your guy to tag team with his boy. What Nathan Peterman? Peterman out Nathan there. Nathan Peterman. I'm it's saying dynasty. Round get stash, this guy. Stashing him deep out there in the Nathan Peterman Zay Jones combination. Stashing him hard. That deep. Moving on to tight ends, hit you with a few of those, you know, just to do it. I'm not really in. To, I mean, it takes a lot for a rookie tight end to really make a fantasy roster, especially in these little, especially in like these 10 team leagues, you know, these littler leagues. But I mean, if you're looking, if definitely you're going to be getting down on one of them. I mean, what's the guy you're definitely, what's your boy out there? I mean, it's got to be OJ Howard. It has to be. This guy, you could look up and he's a top 10 tight end as a rookie and I think it's gonna happen this guy ran a 4 5 one. this guy in my mind is like a future Greg Olson he's got the body size to it he's got good hands he's a good blocker and he goes to Tampa Bay with Cameron Bray I mean you look at what Winston did he made Cameron Bray look good out there for a few weeks in the season so I think this is a guy if you He's going to be getting single coverage. I think he's a guy who, down the road, could be like a top three tight end in this league for fantasy. Yeah, a couple more guys or you might be might show up late for you, a little redraft dart throws and maybe some dynasty stashes. Talking about Evan Ingram and David... What do we got? I mean, yeah, help, I mean, I mean help, me out, help me out here. So we got David Njoku. There we go. Who I'm in love with. I love this guy. But the thing is, is I absolutely hate where he ended up. He ends up in Cleveland, right? So, you think in first year, this is... Have, you have no idea what's going to happen. He'll play with 15 quarterbacks before the end of next season. If you're, out of their if you're in a redraft, I don't know if I Terrible can touch way. him this year. Nothing more than like a last round, throwing a flyer. He's your second or third tight end. Dynasty, I'm stashing him. And a guy that he was mentioning, Elvin Ingram, this guy ran a 4-4-2 as a tight end. If he was a wide receiver, this would have been the fifth best time at the combine as wide receiver. Oof. With that said, it up. I'm not really feeling kind of a it. Vernon Davis type of guy, you know? Yeah. Not, not the big, really bad. I mean, 6'3 is big, but, you know, a tight end sometimes He's not that like thick, that though. Tight ends are usually that 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six category. This guy, you know, a little Vernon Davis, so a little 6'3". Got and, some speed, but... Yeah, I'm not loving where he ended up. No, no. I mean, there's too many mouths to feed. Brought in Marshall. We already got Beckham going on. We got Sterling Shepard, who's going to be playing in the slot, which apparently this guy is going to be about because he can't block worth a damn. So he's going to be playing in the slot, so he's going to be having Sterling Shepard to deal with already. I just don't know. I mean, I think we're capping at this guy. I mean, absolute... What, 40 reception ceiling? I, mean, I think yeah, I think it's got to be 35 to 40 receptions. He's probably going to get you around the six touchdown range because I think he's really going to hit you in that red zone is where his value is going to be. But I think it's going to be a boom or bust tight end to play. I mean, I mean Marshall, or, Marshall or Shepard go down. I mean, this guy starts playing in the slot more like – Starts getting yeah, that 65% of snaps. I mean, he's got upside for sure. I, I mean, 4-4-2 four, four, as a tight end. This guy has... be watching me. This man. guy's got hella upside. He might be getting into some... Maybe Marcus Colston has, was listed as a tight end as a rookie on a lot of fantasy leagues. And, I mean, if this guy can get on the field for you, he might come out of left field like Marcus Colston and listed as a tight end, but he's actually... Everybody knows he's a and wide he, receiver. And then he get him in that tight end slot before next year, before they change it. Somehow this guy's out there getting you six for 80 and a touchdown every week. And but, you're, like, you're raking it in with some Jamook Duke. I think, you're feeling good about I it. I think he's there. a boomer bust, boomer bust weekly play. One other tight end I want to touch on. Another one that I love with my Njoku is some Jake Butt. Jake the Butt Whoa, slide here. He's, he's just... I'm feeling it. He's going to be out until September, he's October. Yeah, she's only a stash. But he's a guy... Yeah, you draft him. A rookie not going to be able to play to October? That is a total... That is a... That is a you might as well just not play all season. season I'm all over it in Dynasty Leagues. In redraft, if he's... 
your second or third tight end and you've got a legitimate number one tight end, I think this is a guy who can pay dividends down the road. This guy could have been a first round pick if he didn't get injured in his bowl game. All right, we got to talk a little bit quarterbacks. You know, we got to do it. There's a fucking bear. And what are we really doing, Bears? We're like bidding against, we're out there bidding against ourselves? Like, that's just, like, that. first of all, that's what we're fucking doing, Bears. We're in this, I mean, it's not like, we didn't do it as bad as Mike Dicka with Rick. I mean, at least Dicka. <laughs> smoking cigars. Smoking cigars and playing golf, like, fucking drafts over, boys, uh, out there. <laughs> but, I mean, we, at least, at least Dicka got a proven talent, Ricky Williams. We're getting this goddamn fucker. I mean, look at this fucker, man. He is a meathead. He is a cocky fucker. I mean, if he's into the booze <laughs> and the ladies like Manzel is, I'm talking about watch the fuck out, bear. I'm talking about this might be some bad news. I mean, listen to this guy talk. This guy is meathead deluxe. We I mean, bring up a picture of him. Look at me. He's in the phone here with Pace. Oh, my God. Bring up a picture of him. Oh, bears. Oh, what have we even fucking done? <laughs> I mean, we're bringing... I just, your ceiling... I'm sorry, Bears, but your ceiling oh. is three to four wins this year. No, yeah. It's got to be three to four wins. I mean, Absolutely. You know we're not even going to play him. You know we're not even going to play him. And that's what Ryan Pace yeah, got yeah. into his pocket. He's like, all right, well, if I make this pick... I mean, people, I mean, people can't prove that I'm an idiot to at least, like... He f the end of 2018, right? He because might this guy be, ain't gonna be on the football field. He's smarter than what you think because he just gained two years as being a GM he of did. the Bears. He's not out there. We're not gonna fire him to at least 2019. This kid's gonna have to play before Pace gets fired again. He knew what he that. was doing the whole time, oh, people. This kid, this, he's not getting fired until this kid plays football for at least a season. That has to happen. Him and this guy are uh, Trubisky and fucking and fucking oh, I don't even want to say his name. Pace and Pace are tied are connected to the hip. They're in the fucking three-legged potato sack race and they are together and if it fails, baby. If he wasn't so smart I'll he would have just drafted ten to one. Use those picks, get defensive <laughs> players, plug and play. The next year's quarterback class I'm is far superior to this one. I'm fucking over it. He knew what he was doing the whole time. He's uh, just it's, gaining I'm years. Mad. I'm so fucking mad, Bears. I mean, I ten to one. Ten to one. This fucking shit clown. This shit show. Mitch, Mitchell Trubisky doesn't win a fucking playoff game ever for the Bears. I'm taking all fucking callers. Email me, Bears. Email me at tankersfantasyfootball at gmail.com if you're a believer. Email me at shit ten to one. Let's get it. <laughs> this fucking shit clown never fucking wins a playoff game for the Chicago fucking Bears in his career. And I'm not talking about this year. I'm talking about ever, Bears. <laughs> They're never, ever. Bring it on. 10 to 1, let's do it. Cam, what on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> the up. only guy in this class that I have any potential of playing this uh, year. I mean, how can in you disregard even... to in, if if we're not talking about injury, if we're just how saying performance-wise, it's it. it's got to be Watson, the only guy who potentially see the field this year. I can even pretend, like yippee, <laughs> you can't even pretend. <laughs> You can't even put out a fucking smile, drink fuck, fucking 20 beers in the parking lot, go in there with your fucking foam finger, and you can't even <laughs> pretend anymore, Bears. <laughs> I mean, my goodness. I mean, they're going to have to, uh, it's going to be, it's going to, you know, it's going to be Mike Glennon. We're talking about a guy, we're talking about this guy's ceiling and this guy's capabilities. Are, we're talking about Buffalo Bill Drew Bledsoe here. We're talking about Drew Bledsoe when he was a Bill or a Cowboy. We're talking about stand there, wait to die, Drew Bledsoe. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't getting it done. He ain't getting it done, old long neck. He ain't getting it done. He ain't slinging it from the, he ain't gonna be slinging it. He's gonna be in the dirt. And we're gonna have to bring in fucking Sanchez. Cause we're like, well, we can't let the kid go out there and ruin his confidence. Can't let the fuck kid go out there and ruin his confidence. So here's here's Mark Sanchez. Congratulations. 
ridiculous. <laughs> Mark Sanchez, if Mark Sanchez starts a football game for us this year, Bears, I swear to fucking God. I swear to God. I swear to God, I'm fucking. You taking your name I'm, off I'm, the season I'm, tickets? I'm coming after somebody. <laughs> I'm coming after you. If Mark Sanchez starts a game, you're taking your name off the list. Oh, I'm, yeah. <laughs> it's happening. I'm taking my name off the list, Bears. I can't see it. Mark Sanchez, Mark Sanchez, Bears, starting. I mean, you see somehow, some long fucking way, maybe he's out there. Somehow he plays a snap, and I'm still mad about that. But if we're like, the Bears starting quarterback for week eight is Mark Sanchez. <laughs> I'm pit this finger's <laughs> pissed me off. I'm done, I'm done fucking with it. <laughs> All, right, All right, moving on. A few more receivers. Deshaun- <laughs> Why? Well, yeah, like I said, Deshaun Watson's the only guy. Performance-wise, oh, that I can these, see these making his all, way in. These but dudes are all borderline quarterback, quarterback, two, two starting quarterback leagues. Do you even want to think about? They might be. These are the, all dynasty options. I don't see any of these. Already hit options. Nathan Peterman, uh, and maybe some Kaiser, maybe some fucking Mahomes. I mean, he's um, got some Brett Favre in him, but yeah. sitting behind Alex Smith, that's gonna a perfect be, fit. Be at for at least him. a year, maybe two years for him to come on, but. I mean, they, they made a trade to get him, though. I mean, they're all in on him. They're, they're all in on him. Pittsburgh got put, potentially the next guy after Roethlisberger, and Josh Dobbs, phenomenal value there. And Peterson or Peterman, like we talked about earlier, I think is a tremendous dynasty pick. I think this guy's a real deal. He's like a nice, boring cross between Alex Smith and Trent Green. He's going to win you games, oh, but he's not going to do no. anything flashy. Trent Green. He's done already. All right. Any other hits you up with a little, maybe a little bonus Juju Smith for the Steelers? Maybe a little Juju just in case Martavius Bryant can't stay out that pot? And he might find his way in. At least we're saying his name, you know. Thank us later. Poor guy. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure to subscribe below. Check out our Facebook. Hop on that Twitter. Be on that Twitter. I love it. We'll tweet you back. You know, get you in, 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 you know, 10 to 1. Let's go. <laughs> Make the bet. Let's, Let's go. Do Let's this. do it. Bring it. Bring it. I mean, I don't know. As soon as I don't know. Thanks for watching. I love it. We will see you again Thanks, soon. Guys. We're going to hit you up with some mock drafts soon. Oh, they're coming. Soon. Bringing it. And I'm in love Bringing with the it. Heat. I am ready. Next couple weeks, we're going to get a, we're gonna get a wave of mock drafts, get it going, hit them early. We're going to do a wave of mock drafts probably every month until the season starts. And then we'll eventually, do. we're going to start doing division by division, breaking down every single fantasy relevant player. We'll give you what land. you need to hear. Here. Oh, oh, we well, don't pick fans. Bring in the heat. We're going to bring the heat. We're going to crunch the numbers, tell you who sucks and who's on it. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. I love you. Catch you guys later. Touch you.